Hello everyone and welcome to Sutton's Days. Today we're doing Mater's. It's Mater Day. It's Mater Day. Okay, so we've already done um, processed, turned into sauce, one half bushel of tomatoes. Um, but now I'm going to bring you along for the second half bushel. It is a hot mess around here. I mean, it's bad. It's bad. Okay, it's so the roasting pan. This is what I'm doing. I take the Roma tomatoes. These are the nice meaty tomatoes. Okay, San Marzano, um... Amish paste tomatoes, Roma tomatoes, excellent, excellent tomatoes for making paste. There's not a lot of water content. You've got more meat in the tomato. See, it's awesome. So I wash them. I have them. I cut off the top of them so that I don't have to deal with much of the core. And then I put them in a roaster. I'm going to put this on the, yeah, I'm going to put this in the roaster, roasting pan, um, and turn it up to 250 for overnight. And then we'll be back in the morning to show you what it turned into. Okay, so we turn it on 250, and it's sitting here, and we are going to let it do its thing. I have my immersion blender over here um, because in the morning I will end up using that to beat down this. But this will be a lot of juice and a lot of the meat. It's going to be fantastic. Let me show you what we end up with. Okay, I almost forgot <laughs> to turn this on. I started started beating it up. Um, okay, so overnight, this went overnight, probably, let's see, about 12-ish hours, okay? And it cooked down quite a bit, as you can see, right? And I love, I love it when it gets nice like that. I like that. I really, really do. So, now what I'm doing is I am cutting through here with my stick blender, and I am beating it up. I'm going to leave the lid uh, kind of off kilter so that the steam comes out, okay? And we're going to let this cook down even more for a little bit until I get myself all set up. And then, come on, get off there. Um, and then we will start straining it. So I'm not going to kill myself trying to beat this all up, but it does make it easier to run it through the food mill. And I want to be sure to show you guys my food mill. Okay. Old school food. Old school food mill. Can't talk today. Okay, so I'm going to keep doing this. Get everything all beat up. We will be back when I'm ready to start running it through. So a half a bushel of tomatoes has been worked down to this sauce. I guess I left this in there. Um, and I didn't beat it up completely. But I did beat it down a lot. There's still some pretty big chunks of mater in there. But when I say we're doing this old school, what I mean is we are doing this this way. We are going to work this through this food mill into this pot. Um, it's not as time consuming and tedious as one would think. But it's still not my favorite way to do it. But I wanted to show you guys what you get with the end product as a result. Okay. Because I am known to not... Uh, not run it through the food mill. I normally will cook it down and then beat it up with my stick blender like I did. And then I will run it through my Ninja um, just to beat it down some more. And skins, seeds, and everything I will put in the jar. Now, that being said, that is not an approved method, okay? That's definitely a rebel canning method. But I really feel like by not using that, it's, it's remarkably wasteful. And we cook this so long at such a high heat that I am not concerned in the least about any issues with the skins or with the seeds. And I don't find that it's any, I don't find that it's bitter or anything else. I actually find it's very good. Um, and then you've got that extra fiber that is in, in your sauce. So, I mean, look at how, that's just a nice, beautiful sauce now. I could let this cook down a little bit more, but I want to get it through the strainer, the food mill and uh, show you guys what we're doing, get it canned up, get it put up. I can cook it down later uh, when I go to use it, definitely, okay? But you need one of these. Now, if you are out garage sale and you see one of these bad boys, it is almost useless without this. You need the rack that it sits in because that either sits in or on the pot that you are going to be working this through. I have two sizes of this because one of these I found without the rack. Um, so... I'm using the smaller one just 
just because it's easier with the camera and everything. And it's going to go down into this pot. And then when I get this pot filled, I'll fill jars and get those going. So let's get started. Okay, so now I will tell you that <laughs> yesterday I had no room on my counter. And there's like none back there now. There we go. Back, back there, there's no space. But um, I'm trying to get you guys set up so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so for this today, I am scooping out the sauce from the, and it's hot. This is all hot sauce right from the roaster, and I'm putting it right into that food mill. And it's draining down into the pot, which is good. That's what we want, okay? So there we go. Okay, so see how it's down, it's going down into the pot, the juice. Now, you hold, hold your handle, that's important, and just start spinning this around. And what you're doing is you're pushing the juice and the, the meat of the tomato through the food mill and down into the pot. It's going to look very watery, okay, because you're leaving a lot of that stuff right up top. But you'll see by the time we're done that most of it actually goes down. Okay. I may go get my other tripod so that you can get closer down and see what's coming out. But I just kind of keep pushing that off the sides and down, and then you just roll it around. Kind of like a spirograph, only you're not going anywhere. Do you remember those? Okay, I just dated myself again, didn't I? Okay, so now I'm just going to add more. And we keep doing this until we either run out of sauce or until the stuff in the bottom in the pot, or until the stuff in the bottom reaches the food now. Okay, let me go get my other tripod and bring it down. So I do tend to keep a butter knife around um, as we do this, you know, get further in the process. See how I can scrape that off? You want that stuff. That's the good stuff. Okay, so we're going to... Just keep running that around in the food mill and let it come out. And see, this doesn't take very long at all. It really doesn't. This is a half bushel. I'll be bringing you along for a half bushel of tomatoes. Um, I honestly, you know, as much as I, I love keeping the stuff in the sauce, um, I don't think this, this takes any less time uh, by any stretch. And I don't think it makes any less uh, dirty dishes. See how that's all coming out, all that nice meat? Okay, so we're just going to keep pulling it off and filling it up. I really don't bother emptying out the food mill um, unless it's not letting me get anything down through there. But if you keep moving it, it will, it will allow you to keep doing that. We don't have that much more left to go because I cooked this down pretty well overnight. So I think this is going to be a very nice sauce. And if it's still too thin for you, if you think that it's too thin by the time you're done, then you can cook down the sauce more. You definitely can. Um, or you can add stuff to it, whatever you want to add to it. I typically only add uh, salt. It's one of the few things I add salt to. Um, I add salt to taste, and I add garlic to taste. That's an automatic, because to me, the garlic just goes with the maters. But I don't add really much of anything else until it's time to use it for whatever I'm going to use it for. Okay. See, now all of that pulp 
you could definitely take and put in your dehydrator and make tomato powder. I'm going to beat it up a few more times, squeeze out as much as I can, um, and finish up what is in the roaster. There's not that much left. Okay, and excuse the sink. It's a mess. You're making tomato sauce, you guys, right? So, okay. I have a little bit more that I have to do, but I've run out of room because the food mill sits in down into this, so I need to get some of this out. But at this point, you can decide whether or not to jar it up the way that it is or to cook it down a little bit more. I am going to most likely jar this up the way that it is. I'm going to add some salt to taste, some garlic powder to paste, taste, thank you, and uh, then we're going to get it in jars. Whew, we are almost there, but I wanted to make sure that you saw all of that great, great tomato that we're getting through the food mill. Totally worth it in my opinion. Totally worth it. I would, I'll admit 100% that I'm doing it this way for you guys. <laughs> okay. But there's also something very satisfying about that. It's making me slow down and enjoy the process. And for me lately, that's, that's kind of a really big thing. Um, I'm finding a pull, a very definite pull to slowing down. And I know part of it is the seasonality, you know, it's falls coming up, autumn's getting ready and, uh, getting ready to slow or roll a little bit. But this year, I think more than any, it's really hitting me and I don't want to waste nor take for granted any of the time that we have. I, I want to enjoy what I do because I think that a lot of times we don't necessarily pay attention to nor enjoy a lot of what we do. And if we're going to be spending our days doing it, we should get some joy out of it. And the joy that I get out of this is not only the process, which I really, really do enjoy, but it is the fact that I am preserving food for my family that we are going to enjoy during the really cold winter months and it's food that we know where it was grown we know you know if we didn't grow it ourselves we know where it was grown and we know what is in there we know what's not in there and to me that is just that is worth every single bit of it and it's part of the joy that I get out of it Hmm, life's too short to do stuff that you don't enjoy doing. So let's find the joy in it. Okay, now I'm going to pour off the last little bit that is in here. There we go. Oh, yeah. Okay, and we're going to work out this last bit and then get it jarred up. Okay, so I'm going to, let's see, I put, I filled up two quart jars. Those are in the canner already, but I'm, the rest of the jars that I'm using are going to be pint and a half jars. They just work much better for us. When you are canning, you always uh, round up when you're canning. So I put in one teaspoon of citric acid per jar. You just pop that down in the bottom and... That will make sure that your acidity is where it should be, okay? And then we go to filling up the jars. Give that stuff in the pot a really good stir. Doesn't take much, couple turns, and you'll see what's separated while you were running it through the food mill um, comes back together again very nicely. So we're gonna fill these up to a quarter inch headspace. Very important, okay? You wanna make sure that quarter inch headspace is there and don't worry about the citric acid in the bottom. It will stir up as you fill the jars, okay? Now, I will put a link down below. You do not have to pressure can these. Um, I prefer to pressure can these. That's my preference, 100%. You can water bath can these, okay? Um, I will leave a link to the National Center for Home Food Preservation down below, and that will tell you um, the time that you have to water bath it for actually takes longer to water bath them than it does to pressure can them. But I guess maybe once you add in the time that it takes to bring it all up and 
bring it, you know, bring it to pressure. Maybe it's about the same, but I just prefer it that way. Okay. I have at least two more jars I have to fill here. So put that over to the side because making a mess is my game. And we're going to wipe down these rims. You want to make sure that these are wiped clean of any debris that you may have spilled. It happens all the time. Okay. And you want to make sure that that does not prohibit you from getting a good seal. I'm pressure canning these, like I said, so I'm just putting the lid and the rings on. Finger tight. Okay. And I'm using my 16 quart Presto pressure canner because I didn't feel like pulling out the big one. And because I'm using the bigger jars, it's just not necessary. I can't double stack, you know what I mean? So there's no need to have the 23 quart out when I can have the 16 quart out. I might be able to fit all of my jars in here. One thing I wanted to clear Let's up, um, you will hear where you can put lemon juice or citric acid in with your tomato juice. You have to put one or the other. Um, and I prefer the citric acid. I don't like the way the lemon juice makes it. I can taste it. I just don't know how else to explain it. That is totally a personal preference. So try both. See which one you prefer and then go from there. Okay, I think had I used quart jars, I would be able to get all of this into the canner, but I didn't. Okay, get the top that off, there we go. That means I'm having something with tomato sauce this week. Okay, so we're gonna wipe these off. You hear Phil's starting some motor outside. Okay, I'm gonna wipe those off. I'm going to put them in the canner and there we go okay let me bring you over Woohoo! okay so we have two quarts and the rest are the pint and a halves we are going to pressure can these for 20 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure because i use the weight if you use the gauge use 11. i wanted to show you this is what is left out of a half a bushel of tomatoes that is what i've got left and i could probably squeeze a little bit more out of that <laughs> okay but you know i don't have all day so that is that is what's left and that can easily be turned into tomato powder to be used in other recipes so the canner came off of pressure we canned it at 20 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure because we have the weight Okay, otherwise it's at 11 pounds of pressure. Um, definitely refer to your um, elevation to figure out how long to can it for. Whew. Okay, so we're gonna get these out. These did have a stop and start because um, the pigs got out. <laughs> so I had to turn everything off and run outside to help gather up the pigs. Uh, which, of course, made me question every decision I've made in the last decade. But, so I'm hoping these all seal properly. They, I, never got, I never had a chance to uh, put the weight on. They vented for probably a good 20 plus minutes before I ran back in, turned everything off, ran back outside. Um, so when I came in, it was just a matter of making sure I had enough water in the canner and start starting the process over again, okay? These all look great. There does appear to be a little bit of siphoning, which honestly, I don't know that I've ever had a tomato product that didn't siphon a little bit. Not the end of the world. Uh, so far I have had all of them seal, so I'm doing okay. Um, let me see here. Do I have more room? There we go. So I'm going to leave these sit out uh, probably for about 12 hours, mm, probably until first thing in the morning. I'll double check them, make sure that they're all sealed and go from there. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So that is what they look like coming out of the canner. I am so extremely happy with this sauce. 
this is going to be some amazing sauce really good and we only did two quarts because for the most part I mean what we what we use is a quart or a pint and a half so that works well for just Phil and I um, I actually did a bunch of pints also with the other bushel so we will see how these all uh, go but we'll be using these all winter long for certain love 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 putting up some tomatoes if I have any more tomatoes coming in and there's a possibility that I will um, I'm waiting to hear about another bushel of Roma tomatoes and those ones I will be doing um, crushed tomatoes so I'll bring you along for that but let's see if they come in so these are the tomatoes and that is my old-school process of how to do it if you don't have um, I haven't done the dishes yet but if you don't have a food mill like that then do what you do what you can do what you're comfortable with okay there's all kinds of methods out there don't be afraid jump in with both feet just make sure that you are processing them for the correct time okay remember if you like what we do here please hit that like subscribe and share check us out on Instagram and Facebook and until the next time everybody please be safe